ZR1. This alphanumeric string of characters represents the ultimate form of the Corvette. Its sole purpose since the 70s has been to showcase raw power, cutting edge technological advances, world class track performance, and all within a package that can be attainable when compared to its European counterparts. The focal point of the ZR1 line of Corvettes have always been their drivetrains, race bred, high revving, dual red cam small blocks, all the way to supercharged LS and LT variants that blurred the line of what was safe for even experienced drivers. The ZR1's understated cosmetics combined with its very recognizable silhouette can easily be mistaken for lesser trim models, but certain cues like the wider stance, the clear hood to showcase the intercooler, or the infamous badge itself will tell you this is the vet of all vets. Today on Explain, we will take a deep dive into the heart of the ZR1 and why it was and still is the king of the hill. The Racer Kit the inception of the ZR1 starts with Zora Arcus Duntov, better known as the father of the Corvette. Throughout the late 60s, Zora Duntov campaigned for higher performing Corvette models, essentially special order street legal race cars that could compete in SCCA racing events, but also be affordable to own and operate. This program is where the 1963 Z06 Corvette was born and also the 1970 ZR1 Corvette. The C3 generation ZR1 was very peculiar in its delivery, as it was never officially marketed by General Motors. You had to know the ZR1 RPO code even existed and what it entailed. For $968.95, what you received with the ZR1 was an engine named the LT1. This was a high compression 350 cubic inch small block Chevy with mechanical lifters and a pretty aggressive camshaft compared to the base engine offerings. The induction system was a Holley 780 CFM four barrel carburetor originally meant for the big block engines and together produced 370 horsepower, which was 70 horsepower more than the base engine offering. The ZR1 RPO code also forced you to ditch other options like air conditioning, power steering, and the radio, which essentially stripped the car down to a lightweight version of the C3 Corvette. Heavy duty disc brakes and upgraded sway bars combined with the rock crusher four speed manual transmission made the ZR1 package more race car than road car. The ZR1 covered the quarter mile in 14 seconds flat at 103 miles per hour with 1970 tires. By 1972, the death grip of the energy crisis and increasing emissions regulations put an end to the LT1 engine and was ultimately canceled at the end of 1972. During the car's three year run, only 53 ZR1 Corvettes were ever ordered. King of the Hill. The 1980s were a time of rapid technological advancement in automotive engineering. More stringent emissions and economy standards meant that just making the engine bigger wasn't gonna cut it anymore. You had to get more creative at making power. The Buer Grand National is a great example of this. A repurposed V6 engine with high-tech electronics for its time and a turbocharger became the fastest accelerating car in America. The C4 Corvette would also get its turn at a high-tech makeover, but with the help of an unlikely candidate, Group Lotus, a world-renowned engine builder for Formula One cars. Chevrolet acquired Lotus in 1986 and together would develop a high-performance V8 that had to accomplish four main objectives to be bestowed with the ZR1 nameplate, the acceleration, the drivability, the fuel economy, and it had to be adaptable into the C4 chassis. The culmination of this three year long endeavor was the LT5, the first dual overhead cam engine in a Corvette. The engine block was an aluminum two piece design maintaining the classic 4.4 inch bore spacing, but with a larger stroke and smaller bore that maintained the 5.7 liter displacement. The LT5 boasted three intake throttles, 16 individual intake runners, and a primary and secondary intake cam low profiles, which all worked in unison, giving the LT5 low speed drivability and top end power. The fuel system was also enhanced with 16 individual fuel injectors and two fuel pumps that the ECM could shut off eight injectors and disable the secondary pump for better fuel economy. With this pretty radical 11.25 to one compression ratio, it made 375 horsepower and 125 more than the outgoing L98. Later in 1993, horsepower bumped up to 405 with the help of revised cylinder heads and exhaust manifolds. The C4 ZR1 held similar performance to the 911 Turbo, but at nearly half the price. Similar to the 1970 ZR1, it was very cosmetically akin to the lower trim models, which customers had a hard time justifying the $27,000 cost over the base vet. 
even at breaking the FIA 24 hour endurance record of 175.885 miles per hour with only stops for fuel tires and driver changes, it wasn't enough to keep the sales high. The C4 ZR1 ultimately ended its reign in 1995, but remained the king of the hill. Blue Devil. Throughout the 2000s, the ZR1 nameplate would go dormant. The Z06 models would take its place as a track-focused Corvette offerings. Rather than using a bespoke high-cost of manufactured V8 like the C4 ZR1, the Z06s used a hot-rodded version of the base engine offering, which meant a much cheaper, more reliable track-focused Corvette. Even with the looming bankruptcy of GM and cutting four of its eight brands, the Corvette development efforts were left unfazed, and soon word of a newly developed engine would soon find its way into an even higher performing Corvette carrying the ZR1 name. The 6.2-liter LS9 power plant of the ZR1 is more closely akin to the 6.2-liter LS3 from the base than the 7-liter LS7 in the Z06. It shares the same 4.065 bore and 3.62-inch stroke, but the block is more robust in its casting. The rotating assembly consists of a forged crankshaft and titanium alloy connecting rods, which were developed on the Z06, even carrying over its dry-sum oiling system. Compression dropped to 9.1 to 1 since it's force-fed by an Eaton 4-lobe TVS 2300, making 10.5 pounds of boost. Also, the camshaft grind was specific to the ZR1 with a wider lobe separation angle to give exceptional idle and emissions. Altogether, the LS9 produced 638 horsepower, instantly putting the world on notice that the king was back. The C6 ZR1 also rectified the issue of being indistinguishable between the lower trim like the C4 ZR1, thanks to the polycarbonate window on the hood to showcase the intercooler, the dual fender vents, the larger fender flares, and the huge carbon ceramic brakes. Now the C6 ZR1 was not cheap, it MSRP'd over six figures, which even for its level of performance created sticker shock, especially when the interiors weren't up to six figure standards. The 11 3 quarter mile and 3.5 seconds 0 to 60 just wasn't enough to justify it over the Z06's performance, and the C6 ZR1 sold less units than the C4 ZR1, in turn making it a pretty rare model at only 4,695 units. Big Supercharger The C7 was known internally at Chevrolet as the last front engine Corvette. With even the C8 mid-engine platform being developed as early as 2013 with test mules to work out suspension geometry, this meant if a ZR1 model was to present itself on the C7 architecture, it would need to live up to the extremely high standards of performance and be the last hurrah for the front engine ZR1. Internally, the engine developed to power the Corvette was known as BAS. Easily mistaken for a GM diesel belt alternator system, this stood for Big Supercharger. This engine would become the LT5, which shared its name with the aforementioned C4 ZR1's engine designation. The new LT5s were run 16 hours a day for months, and occasionally around the clock for durability testing, and the program ended with 105 horsepower over the LT4's output in the Z06. This engine is two and a half inches taller than the LT4 and differs significantly. The LT5 utilizes eight direct injectors with eight additional port injectors to meet fuel demand. The LT5 has a fully forged rotating assembly with block strengthening with gussets around the cylinder head bolts and a rotocast cylinder head to handle the cylinder pressures. The main power difference is attributed to the R2650 reverse rotation supercharger, which outflows and underspins the LT4's R1740 supercharger, producing 12 pounds of boost. The LT5 camshaft also favors more intake duration and lift than the LT4, helping airflow and top-end power, giving it 755 horsepower and a diesel-like 715 pound-feet of torque. Oh. Similar 
to the C6ZR1, this model carried much more visual cues to signify how special it was. The carbon hood bulge with the ZR1 badge, the massive front vents, the huge spoiler were not just beautiful but fully functional. The C7ZR1 was and still is overkill, but all ZR1s before it have always been that way. Zora. As of today, much speculation surrounds the next model to be bestowed with the ZR1 nameplate. What we can confirm so far is that the C8ZR1 will be powered by the LT7, which is a twin turbo 5.5 liter dual array cam V8, which is a derivative of the LT6 in the C8Z06. CAD drawings have shown the LT7 existence, which were leaked and scrubbed very quickly from the internet. Power is expected to be over 800 horsepower and with hybrid configurations to be near 1000 horsepower. From its inception in 1970, the ZR1 model of Corvettes have and always will be the king.